Welcome to Redeeming the Time with Carol Marie. Redeeming the Time is a series of purpose-filled insights for you to redeem God's time with fresh revelation from the Lord. Stay tuned for today's message. Welcome to Redeeming the Time. And we have been learning some Hebrew words, haven't we? Yes. yes. Okay, for me and my household, we will? Abad. Serve. Abad. Abad the Lord. Abad yes, the Lord. that's the Hebrew word for serve. And that means not just that we're going to do things for him, you know, stay busy in church or whatever. But it means that we come into our calling, you know. What, it's the same Hebrew word that's used for the Leviticus priesthood when they would serve in the tabernacle. Okay? And it, they abode the Lord. They served Him. And it was their calling. It was what they were called to do. And so we've been declaring abode over our families, haven't we? Yeah, and we're seeing have. results. I'm telling you, I get emails probably every week on Praise the Lord reports on people having breakthrough in their households Amen. above Amen. the Lord that they're Amen. coming into a place Amen. one one person that I was praying for um, right after I started declaring that he turned his life over to the Lord Hallelujah. I mean like within a week after oh, doing that Lord. I'm hearing the same kind of things release the power of the Hebrew word and we've learned that God created the world with Hebrew you know, we think he said it in English. <laughs> that he said, let there be. And no, he said it in Hebrew. All languages go back to Hebrew. They can trace them all back. It's a creative language. And because it's creative, he created us with Hebrew. Okay? So when we release the Hebrew, there's something, there's power in the Hebraic um, understanding and the concept behind it. So we've been learning that. Okay? And then we were told to honor our father and our mother. And that word father can be translated chief or people of authority or leadership. So it isn't just bloodline. Okay. So we're going to do what? We're going to kabod the Lord. Uh, the, the Lord. We kabod him first of all. <laughs> yeah. But then we kabod others in authority. And you know what? It helps bring them into position. So let's release kabod over our nation, over our president, over our elected okay. officials. Yes. Let's kabod release yes, that. It, it means that you put value on that office. Yes. Now, not everyone maybe has acted in a way. You know, like maybe you knew a police officer <clears throat> and you knew that he committed adultery. And you had no respect for him at all. But you know what? If he was out in the street and he said, and he's in uniform, you're going to stop. You're going to honor his position, aren't you? Yes. yes. No matter what you think of him as a person, right. you honor his position. Well, that's what we're commanded to do. <clears throat> and we have <laughs> three. <laughs> I want four. But <laughs> we have three promises that come back on us. Let's see if you can remember. If we honor, release honor, number one, we will have long life. Long life. But number two, all will be well. Do well. well. you want all to be well with you? Mm -hmm. yes. Not just have a well body, but a well mind, a well... Yes. How about your finances yes. being well? I, yes. I vote yes. for that. Yes. How about your family? Yes. Well. Everything oh, yeah. being well with your family. Yes. Yeah. What about with your church or with your community? Yeah, all will be well with you. And then in the territory that he's given you. So he's given us a third promise that he's going to expand our territory. Yes. yes. Okay? Now that's a really good one. So let's kabod. Release kabod <laughs> over yes. yourself, over your family, you. over your territory. Okay? And release honor to those that have nurtured you and those that have authority in your life. Right? Well, today we have two more Hebrew words that we're going to learn. And it's on your little paper. And those of you that are tuning in on television or internet or even on the our um, FM station on the radio, 
If you only get a piece of this, be sure to tune in on annasgate.org and you can get the rest of the story. Right, guys? Amen. Amen. All right. So let's look at our key verse is from 4610, <clears throat> the first part of that verse. And it says, be still and know that I am God. Now, who's speaking? God. God. Yeah. God is speaking and he's commanded us what? To be still. To be still and, and to know, know that he is God. And we're going to break that down. Now, so our first Hebrew word is Rafa. 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 Okay. That means to cease, to draw, like draw towards the evening. You know, at the when it became Shabbat, it was drawing towards the evening. That means they ceased from all their effort. It was time just to rest in the Lord. So it means to cease from your own efforts, to draw to the end. <clears throat> to be idle, to leave, to let alone, to let go, to let down, to stay, to be still. How many, and you don't need to raise your hand, <laughs> have trouble being still? Now, I'm always telling on my kids. <clears throat> when my son was a teenager, we had a house that had <clears throat> a doorway that went into an enclosed porch area and that doorway was from our kitchen into that enclosed porch area then there was another door that came into the living room and it was a small house and we had enclosed what used to be a back porch so we had these two doors <clears throat> when I would talk to him he would walk this path <laughs> and so I talked to him and then I'd watch him come around this other side and I talked to him and, and he'd be talking to me but he was so antsy he was constantly moving so I would just talk to him this way then I talked to him this way then I talked to him that way now if it was really serious I'd take his little face in my hands well he was taller than me I'd take his <laughs> face in my hands and I'd say now honey this is listen to me I am mom I am mom but to be still was real hard for him at that time. If you find yourself always wanting to talk, always moving, always shifting, always God saying, hey, honey, <laughs> he's, he's going like this, <laughs> be still, let me, let me talk to you. Know that I am God. If he's God and we're not, what is that that you say, Carolyn? You're God and I'm not? There is a there God, is a and, God and you're not. <laughs> there is a God and I'm not Him. Yeah. So, if He is God, that means He is over it all. There's no one above Him. There's no one more powerful than Him. We have to know that He is God. If you find yourself complaining or worrying or picking up anxiety, we're not knowing that he's God. Okay? Now let's break it down and see what this means. <clears throat> now I love <clears throat> the pictures. Remember we've talked about with Hebrew, not only most of the time it's a sound, there's some silent letters, and <clears throat> it's a shape, always. Okay? And there's a numeric value, there's a word picture, and a concept. Okay, so we're going to break down Rafa. Okay, and it's really three Hebrew letters. I'm going to show you what they look like. <clears throat> the first one is Rosh, and sometimes it's spelled R-E-Y-S-H, and sometimes it's spelled R-A-S-H. And this is what it looks like. Okay? And it's kind of reminds you of a seven with a rounded side oh. to it. Can you see that? With Rosh, the, the picture of it is a head. So the concept is a person or the head or the highest or the first. Okay? The value of it, the numeric value, is 200. 200 means expectancy, needing more than what you have. You're going to go to the highest. You're going to go to the one that's above it all, aren't you? Yes. Because you can't do it yourself, all right? 
Now I put in Psalms 119, 153 through 160. The reason for that, many of you are aware, that Psalms 119, every phrase, uh, section, is named after a letter in the Hebraic alphabet. and goes all 22 letters, okay? And there's a section, that, and each verse starts with that Hebrew letter. So, I put that in your notes so that you can do a little study. You can find out, look, over, look it over and say, okay, what do they have in common? What do you want to teach me on this one, okay? The second letter, what is it? Hey. Hey. Okay. <clears throat> and hey looks like this. It looks almost like a backwards G. Okay. It's a picture of a mouth. It's, it's like you got your mouth open and words are getting ready to come out. Right? Okay. The concept is to speak a word to open to command. Okay. So that goes right along with mouth, doesn't it? So we're, we're talking the concept has to do to speak a word to open to command. The value of it is what? 80. 80. 80. Okay. And 80 means mouth and speech, but it also represents new beginnings multiplied with divine order. See, number 10 is divine order. Okay. 8 is new beginnings. You need that accelerated? Do you need your new beginning accelerated? Okay, right there. Speak pay over your life. <laughs> and Psalms 119, 129 through 136 is your, is your section there. That, that um, all starts with pay, that letter. And then our third letter is what? Hey. 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 Look at there. Hey. It's a, a, a two word pictures. It started out with hands raised up, and then it went to the lattice in a window. Okay, so it, it can represent both picture of hands raised up and window. The concept is behold. So you can kind of see with your hands raised up, you'd be going behold, right? And it also is to show or to reveal. Okay? Like you're looking through a window, you guys? Okay, talk to me. Yes. All right, you're looking through a window yes. and, you're, and you're wanting to behold something. Yes. Yes. Do you get the feeling of expectancy? Yes. Yeah, behold. There's something coming. Yeah. The, num the value of it is what? Five. Five. And five is the number for grace. grace. Okay. It also represents favor and the fivefold ministry. The scripture is Psalms 119, 33 through 40. And every phrase, every verse starts with that letter, hey, in the Hebraic alphabet. Okay? So the word picture of this word that we, that's rafa, which means to be still, look at what the word picture is when you put those three letters together. It's us being quiet so that our head can speak to us and reveal his will. Is that good? Yeah, that's really good. Alright, put your hands up. Say, Lord, 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 I'm willing to be quiet. I'm willing to be quiet. To be still. To be still. So that you can speak to me. So that you can speak to me. And reveal your will to me. And reveal your will to me. I open up myself to you. I open up myself to you. Heal my life. Heal my life. The areas that cause me to want to stay busy. The areas that cause me to want to stay busy. So that I can be still in your presence. So I can be still in your presence. And trust you with my life. And trust you with my life. Alright, the Lord has told us in Psalms 40, 10, the very first part, he said, Be still and know what? That I am God. You guys, the bottom line is. If we're worrying about something, if we're feeling overwhelmed with something, if we're feeling like, you know what, if I can't, if I don't get this much money, then I can't make it. Or if I, if this doesn't happen in my job, then, then I'm not going to be able to go forward. If, if you find yourself 
figuring it all out up here, you're not being still and knowing that he's God. Mm -hmm. He's above it all, you guys. So if we're worrying about it, guess what? We're not knowing that he's God. Now, to know that he's God, we have to be still so that we can know that he's God. <laughs> right? And we just found out that this being still has to do with us being quiet enough so that the head, let him be head, let him be Lord, let him be above it all. Amen. Let him speak to us and reveal his will. Okay, but if to know that he's God, let's break that down. Are you ready? Yeah. The word know is yada. Say that. Yada. Oh, yes. Okay, I just put some of the words in here. Yada can be translated acknowledge, to be acquainted with, advise, answer, appoint, assuredly, be aware, comprehend, consider, be diligent, discern, discover, endued with, familiar friend. How do you like that one? Instruct, kinsman, cause to let, or to, Cause to let know, or cause to make known, see how that works? Come to give, have, take, take knowledge, have knowledge, be, be made, make to be, make self, make self known, perceive, regard, have respect, be sure, of a surety, understand. It's the same word that is used about intimacy. When you're reading in the scripture and it says that, that um, Isaac knew Rebecca. Mm -hmm. That meant intimacy where she could conceive. Okay? We're talking about an intimacy between husband and wife. Now, in the spirit, we're after a pure intimacy with the Lord in such a way that we can conceive and birth the will of heaven. What an honor, you guys. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? He wants us to know Him in an intimate way where we know that He can take care of everything that concerns us. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Alright, let's, work, let's um, break down our words. Now this is also three letters, like our last one. First we have the Yod, or Yod. Okay? Where is my little thing? <clears throat> Here it is. All right. You see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. It looks like a, just a little wiggle, doesn't it? All right. It's a yod. It's a picture. And if you look at the word picture here, mm -hmm. it, the word picture is a fist or a closed hand. The concept is a deed, work, to make. Okay. The value is what? Ten. All right. Ten represents law, government, divine order. It also represents testings and responsibility. Okay. Now, when you see a fist, don't you think of more power? Uh huh. Okay. So it's it's a fist that say it's a deed, it's a work, it to make something. There's power behind it. And that's why law, government, divine order, you know, all of that is connected with it. Psalms 119, verses 43 through 80, every verse starts with a yod. Okay? Our next letter is the, what? Dalap. Okay? Dalap, the word picture is what? A door. Okay? You see it over here. We've got a door. The concept is pathway or to move into or out of. So think, when you see a dollop, there's a pathway. It's a doorway. It's an opening. Okay? Either to get out of something or to get into it. <laughs> yeah. Okay? The value is what? Four. Four. Now, I love the number four. It, because Anna's gate represents the borders, doesn't it? We establish territory. That's kind of what we're all about, is raising up watchmen, intercessors, 
to establish territory. And then the widow, that's anyone that's not married, that God is their husband, okay? That's taken from the Greek and the Hebrew. So it isn't just by death of spouse, but it's also by divorce or by circumstance. If you've moved into a place where God is your husband, you know, the scripture says the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is her husband. If you don't have a husband, God's called the church to be your covering. And in Proverbs 15.25, the scripture says that God will establish the borders or the territory of the widow. Yes. I believe that is what our special calling is, you guys. So number four is real important, especially if you are a widow. We're all called to take territory and to be watchmen. Jesus said for us all to watch and pray. So I believe that calling is for all of us. But there's a special anointing, I believe, for the widow who's moved into a place where God is our husband, where we establish territories. And four represents the borders, the corners of the earth. It also represents change. How many are ready for some change in your life? Yes. Yeah, especially if you've been going through stuff that you haven't appreciated. <laughs> But you know what? When change comes, a lot of times we buck on it, don't we? Because we're familiar even with the stuff we've been going through. We go, ah, I don't know if I want change. And, and here we're praying for change. And then God brings change and we go, ah. <laughs> but the reason why it represents change, we have the different tides. We have the different uh, wind directions, your north, south, east, and west. You have your different seasons. It represents change, okay? Our scripture is Psalms 119, 25 through 32. Okay? And every verse starts with a dollop. So I want you on your homework, go over those scriptures and find out what they have in common and see what the Lord is speaking to you, especially if you're dealing with some change in your life right now, okay? The last letter in this um, is our, what? Iron. Okay. And iron is a picture like this. Now, it's the word picture is an eye. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and the concept is to see, to know, to experience. It also represents revelation. Iron. Okay? Ion is a silent letter. So this is like one of the ones that we're talking about that is, that we say, okay, Ion, why are you putting an I in there, Lord, if it's, if it's supposed to be silent? Well, let's look at Because he's wanting to bring revelation. He's wanting to release revelation to you on that. Okay? The value of it is what? 70. 70 is a real important number, you guys. It represents spiritual order. You know, like the 70 elders. Okay? 70 is a real important number. Okay? Now, you put these three letters together to make the word no. Okay? And what is our Hebrew word for no? Did yada. you forget already? Yada. 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 Okay. <laughs> yada. 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 Because you got your accent on the last part. Yada. Okay. So that picture and concept is to know beyond your mind as to experience oneness that brings change and establishes order. Whoa. Is that good? Yes. Read it with me. The picture and concept is to know beyond the mind as to experience oneness that brings change and establishes order. Oh, we need to be speaking yada over ourselves a lot. Okay, put your hands up. Say, Lord, I receive your yada. Lord, I receive your yada. I want to yada you more. I want to yada you more. Thank you. Woo! Thank yes. You. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you thank for the God. honor to Yadah you. Yes. <laughs> thank you, God. Woo! Thank you, God. Yes. Thank you, mm. See? 
the more we yada, the more we know Him, the more we won't worry about stuff. Amen. Really? Amen. Think about what is it that you that you find yourself worrying about. Isn't God bigger than that? Yes. Yes. So the bottom line is we don't know Him. Right? We don't really know Him if we're worried about it. We need to know Him. We need to yada Him. We need to yada Him in such a way that we know He's got it all taken care of. You know, in one year, I'll be 70. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And I'm still wondering what I'm going to be when I grow up. <laughs> Do you know? You don't have to have it all figured out. I know I, I've talked to this one gal that's been out of college for a couple of years. And, you know, sometimes people when they've gone to college, they're thinking, okay, I ought to have it all figured out. By this time, I should know who I'm going to marry and what job I'm going to do for a career, and I should have this and this and this in order. I mean, how many of us all thought that, too? Yeah. I mean, I could say that. But you know what? It's not about us, is it? And isn't it wonderful it's about Him? Amen. And we have different seasons, and our seasons change. It's not always springtime. And it's not always summer, and it's not always winter, and it's not always autumn. You know, thank God. I mean, people move to East Tennessee because we have all four seasons, and sometimes in the same day. <laughs> Yesterday we had hail and summer, and I mean, I'm going, oh my goodness. Spring, right? Yeah. All right, everybody go like this. Okay. We're going to shake it loose. Shake it loose. Yeah, yeah. I release to you the Gumby anointing. <laughs> Those of you who can remember Gumby, he was flexible. <laughs> okay. Let's praise him for the Gumby anointing. All right. Gumby. <laughs> Uh, well, you watch that with the kids. And I don't know if Gumby's still around, but I love Gumby. And you know, if they, they needed a bridge, Gumby became a bridge. If they needed a ladder, Gumby became the ladder. He was flexible. I release to you that flexibility, that anointing. And you know what? It's because you trust God. Yes. He's God, and we're not. And it's okay. Aren't you glad you're not God? Amen. Oh my goodness, what a responsibility. When we've tried to be God, we just make a mess. But you know what? When we just shift and trust Him with our life and be willing to be still, you guys. We want to be still. All right, our last scripture that kind of backs this up is our example. <clears throat> and it's taken from Exodus 14, and it's verses 13 and 14. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord, which he will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, and that could be translated the enemy, whatever your enemy is today, okay? The, uh, um, you, will see never, you will never see again. Okay? The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Okay, so the enemy represents whatever it is you're dealing with. Okay, are you dealing with fear? Are you feeling like uh, you can't make it? Maybe it's overwhelm. Maybe it's intimidation. What is it? We need to we need to recognize the enemy. See, he says, he says here, the enemy, the Egyptians are the enemy. You see today, you will never see again. So you've got to at least recognize that there's an enemy, right? Uh -huh. But that God's bigger. He's yeah. bigger. Okay. Right. 
So what enemies are you facing? I want you to identify them. Think about that a minute. And then I have, I'm going to introduce you to the seven Bs. Okay. And at our after our break, we'll we'll you'll get to know them better. <laughs> our little bumblebees. Okay. Number one, be what fearless. Why? He said. He said, "Do not be afraid." Shall we be what fearless? Okay. And I want you to find scriptures on that. If you're dealing with areas of fear in your life, find you some scriptures on, you know, on, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. Okay? Mm -hmm. The second one, be firm. Mm -hmm. Agree with his word and don't waver. Okay? He said to stand firm, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So we want to be stable. If you find yourself wavering, James, write this in your notes. James chapter 1. It talks about if you're like a wave on the ocean in and out of faith, you're double-minded. And don't expect anything from God. Woo! Because you're in and out of faith. Okay? So look up some scriptures about being stable, be firm, be strong in Him. Okay? Then He wants us to be watchful. So He says you will see the deliverance. Right? So we have to be watchful. We need to watch for his deliverance. Remember we talked about that expectancy? Mm -hmm. Right? If there's an expectancy in knowing God, when we really know him, it's like, Lord, how are you going to take care of this one? How, you know, it looks overwhelming to me, but I wonder how you're going to handle this one. <coughs> you know, it looks like I have no money, and I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing, but... You are bigger than this. Amen. I can hardly wait to see how you turn this thing around. Amen. See, that's, the, that's what it is. We be watchful. You look for his deliverance. You expect it. Get you some scriptures on that. All right. Then we, number four, we believe. How'd you like that spelling on that one? B-E-E. -E, believe that he will deliver you. That is simply agreeing with heaven. You know, if he said it, he means it, Amen. and we align with it, and then you don't sabotage it with your mouth, like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, if this doesn't happen, then this is going to happen. No, stop it. But God, that maybe way. in the natural, that might be with a normal way it would happen, but God's bigger than that. Amen. So don't close the, God, the door to God to work on your behalf. <laughs> Believe him. Believe him at his word. Okay? Number five. Be aware of the enemy. You're a watchman. <laughs> Don't be surprised if somebody uh, puts you down or makes fun of you or whatever, you know? <laughs> they did that to Jesus. Yes, that's right. Yes. <laughs> They did it to the prophets. Mm -hmm. You know, Yeshua said, don't think it's strange. If, they're gonna, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. So why do we get surprised? We want everybody to like us. We want everybody to be nice. I mean, that's my personality. I want everybody to like me. Be nice. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? They weren't all nice to Jesus. Mm -hmm. oh, they weren't. Okay, so... Uh, be aware that there's an enemy. <clears throat> we need to see it. We need to face it. But you know what? We need to get tired of it. Yes. Amen. There was Amen. somebody Amen. that used to intimidate me. I could get a text from them, and it would undo me for weeks. Is that ridiculous? Yeah. Yes. And finally, a friend of mine said, you are allowing a text to do that to you. It was like a slap in the face. I thought... What am I doing? You know, you got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. You got to get tired of letting the enemy take advantage of you. And then you choose for the change. You choose to change and let him be God in your situation. And whatever it is in you, now sometimes there's truth to it. You know, the very thing that they're speaking against you, look and see if there's some truth in there. 
We can all mature. We can all grow up. Amen. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Maybe somebody says you talk too much. Well, do you? I remember people telling me that. I can't imagine why they said that. <laughs> and, I, and that wasn't where you were supposed to laugh. <laughs> but you know what? Because I had so much inside of me that wanted to come out. And then I finally find somebody to listen and... <laughs> That's why I understand you guys. <laughs> Wait a minute now. <laughs> So, you look and see, what is there some truth in it? Okay? And if the more we have time with God, and the more we talk things over with Him, we won't have to explode over everybody else. <laughs> see, I needed to take my things to the Lord and sit up all over you. Okay? So that, by, have you ever... Now we don't do it because we like filtered water. But years back, you could just drink from the tap, you know, and drink from the water hose. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Well, have you ever had, in the summertime, I lived in the desert, and here's this water hose that has been sitting out in the sun, and then you turn it on and you go to get a drink, and it tastes like plastic, hot plastic, right? Mm -hmm. But what you do is you turn mm -hmm. on and you let it run a little bit. You get all that hot plastic out of there, and then you get a drink. Now that's because you got pure water coming from the well. <laughs> but anyway, so that's the same thing with us. You spend time with God and you get your pump going. You get your you get that flow, that living water. And anything that's icky, it gets out and he filters it and he shows you, oh, this is what you need to take care of and let me handle this and you know, we get the water hose going. Then, when we're with people, it's fresh water. It's fresh water. It just comes out. And it doesn't taste like plastic. <laughs> right? Okay, what number am I on? Six. Number six. Because <clears throat> we're getting tired of being sick and tired, aren't we? Yes, there is. Okay, so number six, be assured. Be assured that he's greater than the enemy. See? He, you're, you're not going to see the enemy anymore. The Lord will fight for you. Be assured that He's greater. Focus on Him. See, we focus on the answer, not the problem. So first we deal with the problem, because sometimes we're the problem. <laughs> right? We can't blame it on everybody else. We've got to let God deal with us. Okay? But then there's a time to focus on Him and move forward. Okay? And get your little scriptures on that. And then what's number seven? Be still. Be still. Be still. We're going to practice <laughs> being still. Practice getting your mind quiet. <clears throat> practice where you're not talking all the time. Put on some worship music that's just instrumental, that's not words. And just let it play. And just let it bathe you. And just worship Him and listen to Him. We're going to practice a little bit of that in our activation. Okay? Practice quieting yourself. Be still. You don't have to have the TV on, the radio on, the, everything on, you guys. All the time, all this noise. Be still and know that He's God. Okay? Put your hands up. Say, Lord, I thank you that I can be still. Lord, I thank you that I can be still. And that I know that you are God. And I know that you are God. And I can trust you. And I can trust you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's praise him. Thank you for watching Redeeming the Time with Carol Marie. We'd like to encourage you to visit annasgate.org for more information. We pray that this message has been a blessing to you. There is an awakening taking place and it's exploding around the body of Christ.